What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today we're talking about batteries in parallel. Uh, this is a very common question I, I get and so I figured it was time to go ahead and just cover this. Um, real quick, in each of these stations here I've got a power source here. This represents any power source that you're using, uh, windmill, solar, combination, whatever. Uh, and then there's a circuit load um, item here and this just represents the amount of stuff so instead of hook, hooking up a bunch of turrets I could just simulate that by setting a branch to represent a bunch of turrets. All right so uh, we're going to get started by, by, by quickly covering the single battery and the, just to kind of so we can we're going to have to compare these so you can see um, what you need to know about batteries in parallel and why it works but also doesn't work. Um, so with a single battery let's say you've got this hooked up I've got you know an active usage of two because this branch is set to two. Um, see my video on branches if you want to know more how they interact with batteries. But let's say I hook up, uh, you know, a turret and a switch. You know, that would be 11 that you would need for that. So this is going to represent 11 here. This represents a turret and a switch. And you'll notice that this, this battery now has an active usage of 11. And so in order to charge that, so let's say you wanted to calculate, well, if I have an active usage of, of, of 11, what's the minimum amount of power I need coming into this thing to keep it from dying? And that's where you use this minimum charge equation, which is just the active usage times one. So therefore divided by 0.8. So active usage divided by 0.8 gives you the minimum charge. And so if you were to take 11 and divide that by 0.8, you would get 13.75. So, so a minimum 14 uh, volts coming in. So I would set this to 14 and that's going to maintain, you know, at least this charge and not let it dissipate. It has a, a tiny, tiny trickle charge over what the, 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 the minimum. So it'll keep it, you know, topped off here. And so that's the thing about about active usage and charge is that you need to, um, you know, uh, either calculate this or just go with what the minimum, the mi minimum would be, should this be fully loaded? That's what a lot of uh, players do is that they don't worry about what it is when it's 11 or 50 or 75 active usage. They just say, well, I could, I could use up to a hundred, uh, rust Watts in this battery. And so if I do that hundred divided by 0 0.8, it's 125. So I'm going to set this to at least 126 just so it has a tiny bit, you know, on top of it to keep it charged. And that's it. So then I can load this up if I ended up, you know, putting all 100 on here uh, and I had an active usage of 100. There we go. You know, my charge is enough to maintain that. You'll notice that it dipped down to, you know, 23,997, but it's going to stop. It's going to start coming back up because it's just enough to keep this thing from dying. And so, and that's, that's the point. So for me, when I play, I usually just put it around 130 and call it good just to keep it up. And that's it. So you can see right there, it's going to pop back up. And there, you know, it's just hovering around the top there. So the point is, is that, you know, this is how this relationship works uh, with charge, you know, active usage and, and the minimum charge equation. And so, so how does that apply to batteries in parallel? So this is where things get tricky. So right now I've got this set to just two, it looks like. Um, and you'll know, you'll see what I've done here. Um, unlike this first one, it's a very, very simple setup. It's pretty self-explanatory. This one over here, um, I've set up a little charging block right here to charge both batteries. You know, I have two batteries in, in parallel. And what in parallel means is that the power out of this battery is running to a root combiner here. And the power out of this other battery is running to the other side of this root combiner here for the effect of getting 200 volts coming out of this, this and here. And so, and that's what batteries in parallel is. The idea is that you take two batteries, you put them together and you get their combined outputs. And that does work. You do have a combined 200 coming out of here. So great. And so then of course you have to think about charging. Uh, you know, this one is currently set up to 135 on both sides. And I did that just by sending out 271 specifically so that this could have one and then you get 135 and 135. Um, and I just did that, you know, just to set these up based on that uh, minimum charge equation so that my active usage at the maximum at 100 is going to be divided by 0 0.8, which gives you 125. And so there we go. But the point here is that, okay, so this all looks fine. We've got this electrical branch coming out. We've got our 200. So hypothetically, we could set up a complicated circuit that has over 100, you know, uh, rust watt requirements, and this would take care of it. So here's the problem. And this is why what a lot of people don't realize is that it's how the batteries register active usage. So right now I've got this set to two. So let's say I set this to, we'll do our same thing. We'll do a, we'll do a, a turret example. So a single switch and a turret together would be um, requirement of 11. So th set that to 11. There we go. And 
and then of course we have this we have this uh, root combiner in in the path here in line of the circuit, so it's going to add one ac extra active usage. That's where you get the 12 there. So it's 11 plus that one is 12. So you'll notice that this one has 12, but this also has 12. And so that's the problem is that even though these two batteries are combining and they're they're they are essentially this is a mock turret over here. It's one turret but the batteries are both registering active usage on that, which means you're gonna have to charge them both on that active usage. So you literally, the, the, the problem here is that it's really inefficient um, up to a point, because if you're doing stuff like this, where I have, I have you know 11 plus this one here, so I have 12. So if I were to take 12, divide that by 0 0.8, I'm gonna get uh, 15. So I need at least 15 going to each of these batteries, not one. So if I had set this one up at 11 here, well, we'll do 12 just because it, you know, to mock that, to simulate that uh, root combiner there. If I, if this was set to 12, now this is set to 12. So again, 12 divided by 0.8 is 15. I would have to set this to 15 at least, so I'll put 16. But you'll notice that I had to do that for this battery. Here, I have to do it for both batteries. So if I need 15, I'm gonna have to set this to 31. So this has one, I'll set this to 15 to split this up evenly. So now I've got 15 and 15, 31 arriving, there we go. So they're each receiving their, their 15 to stay charged uh, for one turret, say, this is a mock turret, which means I'm charging twice for one turret that I would need if I had that turret hooked up to a single battery. And that's the problem. Batteries in parallel, double dip. Now there's a relationship where at a certain point, this becomes efficient again if you use them to their max capacity. So like, let's say you do have some circuit that does require say 180, uh, you know, let's say you have something that, 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 that caps way up there at 180. Okay, so there we go, we've got 180, which means we have an active, see now what we've done here is we've pegged them out. And so since they each require 100, you know, each, each now require 125, to stay charged, they're gonna they're gonna start draining right now because we don't have them. So if I want these each to have 125, I'm gonna have to set this up, say, 251, to get past that rule because here it is, active usage. If it's 100 divided by 0.8 gives you 125 times two is 250. I need one for this branch here. So if I set these each to 125, there we go. And now I've got the minimum to keep it going, coming to each one. So at this point, because my circuit's 180, we'll say, if I take 180, this might be a little confusing, but if I take 180 and divide it by, by, uh, by uh, 0 0.8, let's see, 180 divided by 0 0.8 gives me 225. So I'm only, my inefficiency, 251, you know, I'm not, it's, I'm wasting what, 26 uh, volts coming into this thing. Uh, and so it's less, my efficiency has gone up a little bit because I'm using such a big circuit. So if I were to then say, well, my circuit is, you know, a full 200 coming here. It's gonna say 199 because obviously there's only 200 arriving. But let's say I put this to 200. I've maxed out my, my active usage. So I am using 200. So essentially at this point, I still need that, 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 uh, that 251. And if I did 200, 100, divided by 0 0.8 is 125 times two is 250. And so now I'm using this efficiently as if it were two independent batteries. So the point here is that the higher the circuit load coming on here, the more you you get towards efficiency, but this only applies the, so essentially the, 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 the trick is this, you only want to do this if your circuit is over 100 rust watts. And even then, if it's say 140 rust watts, you wanna do this with a large battery and a medium battery, that'll keep it more efficient. Anything you do, and this is for most players, that because most players run their bases and the, and the circuits do not need to be on one battery, you're better off just setting up multiple batteries like this and keeping your efficiency based on this minimum charge equation or just giving it the 120, say five, six that it requires just in case you max it out. Uh, it's better to do that. The only time you're gonna do this is if your circuit is one circuit and it must have one power source, which is very rare. Very few people do this. If it must have one power source powering the entire circuit that's over 100 rust watts. And so then you have to decide whether it's this, this plus a, a medium, this plus even a car battery, if it's like maybe it's 105, whatever it is, you wanna pair it as best you can, or just accept the lower the amount that I'm putting in here, 
the bigger the waist because it starts to double up the lower you are and it approaches a one-to-one -one as you get toward 200. And so you can look at this graphically over here, uh, for those of you who prefer it this way, the you know the single setup over there on the far left is the blue line the the orangish reddish is the parallel right here and so if you look at those two lines you know you've got this this uh parallel line here versus the single line here and you can look at this this chart so this is the active usage set up on either the battery or batteries if it's 50 on a single setup like the far left, it's gonna be 62.5 minimum. So basically 63 to keep it charged. But if that same 50, so this is the same setup that requires 50 rust watts to, to run it, uh, that on a dual battery setup, on a batteries in parallel setup is gonna require 125. So same item, some 50 rust watt item, these are the two charging differences based on how you have it set up. It only matters and the, and, and the plot doesn't even go up. It would have to go up to 500. It would only matter if you got to an active usage of a hundreds or into the two hundreds, you know, which is goes beyond this plot. But but that's that's the idea. So so I guess like, you know, capping this off, uh, you know, the sum it all up, it's that single batteries are almost entirely the better way to go because you can charge them more efficiently. You're not going to lose on that double dip. Um, and they're safer, you know, so if someone destroys part of your, your root power sources, you only lose one of your batteries, not necessarily all your batteries, depending on how you set up your power distribution to charge them. Um, and then in batteries in parallel, it only becomes worth it. You know, the only time you would ever do this is if your circuit has a load requirement beyond the capacity of the battery and it must be powered by a single source, which that doesn't even always track. You could just hook up multiple power sources to certain parts of your switch. So, so you know, I hope that kind of clears it up. Uh, and that's just about all I've got, folks. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise, you can get me on my Discord. See you later.